Egyptian pharaohs enslaved Hebrews for over 400 years. Enraged by this, the Hebrew gods decided to seek revenge against the Egyptians. An Egyptian ruler who believed he was God tries to exert power over the people. However, as he continues to get more delusional, the Hebrew gods make sure that the Hebrew people never face any problems from Egypt again. A man named Moses and his brother Ramses, who is the son of the Pharaoh, have a good relationship. A ritual is performed before the Battle of Kadesh, in which a goose is killed to bless the battle and find the outcome. However, a shaman to the Pharaoh lets the men know that in the upcoming battle, one will save the other, and the Savior will rule. This confuses the two, but they prepare for battle. Prince Ramses leads a raid on the Hittite border with 2,000 chariots and 16,000 men. They plan on capturing slaves and preventing the Hittites from ever attacking them. The Hittites are informed of the Egypt soldiers' plan beforehand and send 20,000 troops to the border. Ramses decided to send half of his soldiers to attack from behind, while he led the remaining soldiers to attack from the front. However, despite his efforts, the soldiers of Hittite are prepared and they stop eating lunch to partake in the upcoming battle. Ramses orders his soldiers to start shooting arrows at the soldiers, launching the first attack. This led to thousands of Hittites dying immediately, even before the battle began. To counter the attack, the Hittites formed a human shield. Unfortunately, this was no match for the Egyptians, as they run their chariots over the soldiers, killing them instantly. As the battle continues, Moses orders the soldiers from the back to attack. The enemy soldiers are killed in large numbers. However, Ramses is attacked during the battle when the driver of his chariot is killed by an arrow. As Ramses tries to control the chariot, an enemy chariot crashes into his, and he is crashed into by another wagon from the front. Ramses is knocked off his feet and falls on his back. Moses, fighting nearby, notices that his brother is in danger. Ramses is able to pick himself up, but suddenly, another cart comes toward him at full speed. Moses is able to stop the cart just in time by ramming a lance into the wheel, fulfilling the prophecy. Moses thinks his brother will appreciate his act. However, it just leads to resentment building up in Ramses' heart. Ramses picks up a sphere, planning to kill Moses on the battlefield, and Moses sees him out of the corner of his eye. However, instead of reacting, Moses continues fighting on the battlefield, and Ramses is pulled onto another chariot by his soldiers. The battle ends, and the soldiers return to Egypt. Greeted with loud cheers from the crowd, the soldiers feel pride at winning another battle. A while later, the Pharaoh approaches Moses for a private talk. He asks Moses about Ramses' silence after returning from the battle, and Moses confesses that the prior prophecy had come true. The Pharaoh does not seem surprised, and even confesses that he believes Moses would be a better ruler than Ramses. However, since Moses is not of his blood, the prophecy cannot be fulfilled, and Moses cannot rule. The events of the battle haunt Ramses, and after the Pharaoh's death, he becomes the new Pharaoh. In his fear of being overpowered by Moses, Ramses expels Moses from Egypt. Moses visits a town where he learns that he is of Hebrew descent. However, Moses doesn't want to believe it. After visiting another town, Moses finds a beautiful woman and marries her. The two have a son together and are living happily. One day, Moses visits a mountain and meets a god Hebrew in the form of a child who tells him that Egypt is going to be plagued by disasters because they have angered the Hebrew gods. Meanwhile, the first disaster happens when fishermen on the Nile are attacked by giant crocodiles. No fishermen survive the attack and their blood is mixed with the water. The second disaster happens when all the fish in the Egyptian water suddenly die and can be seen on the water's surface. The contamination of the water causes all of Egypt's water supply to become unusable and also destroys the farmlands, leaving no food for the people. Watching the disasters happen, Ramses has rituals performed to ask the gods to purity the water for them. However, their rituals are not successful. Some days later, a third disaster occurs, where millions of frogs crawl from the bottom of the water and come to the streets of Egypt. Ramses' queen is covered with frogs when she awakens in the night, and panics. The entire room is filled with frogs. Eventually, 
Due to lack of water because of the contamination, the frogs die and lead to a fourth disaster. The dead bodies of the frogs attract flies, which then begin attacking the people. Ramses calls an emergency meeting in the Great Hall, where the ministers say that if they can deal with the current disasters, the flies might die out, just like the frogs. Unfortunately, the fifth disaster strikes, as a sudden plague kills and injures most of the Egyptian population. The plague leaves horrible injuries on the faces of people, including the pharaoh's family. The royal family receives a message from the Hebrews on a white horse. The message claims that the disasters would not end, but would only worsen with time. The release of the Hebrews would have prevented these disasters from worsening. However, Ramses believed he was God and in control of everything. Instead of releasing the Hebrews, he began torturing them further. He takes out all of his anger and frustration on the Hebrews, which induces the wrath of the Hebrew gods again. The Hebrew gods send down a sixth disaster, where all the livestock on Egypt suddenly die a violent death. Even the pharaoh's favorite horses are not spared, and this upsets Ramses. He calls a meeting again to get an explanation for the current events, but even the sorcerers are unable to answer any questions. The sorcerer simply tells him that the people need to deal with these calamities, and soon all will be calm. This angers Ramses, and he orders the execution of the sorcerer. Ramses contacts a priest to see what can be done, but she claims she's tried to pray to six different gods, and no prayer has worked. Angered, Ramses has her executed in front of a large crowd. One night, the dark sky suddenly fills with lightning and thunder and releases a violent rainstorm. At the same time, a hailstorm begins, and this is the seventh disaster sent down by the gods. The storm destroys the remaining houses in Egypt and destroys the remaining crops. As Ramses watches the storm approaching, he suddenly blames himself for bringing Egypt to its knees. He ponders over surrendering to the Hebrew gods. Moses, in the meantime, is angered at the disasters that have impacted the lives of the common people. Moses hopes that the disasters would be put to rest. However, the next morning, the eight disaster arrives in the form of locusts. The locusts swarm the air and force the farmers working on the crops to retreat. The locusts destroy more of the crops. Due to the massive decrease in food production, the quartermaster advises the pharaoh to give some of the food to the common people. However, in his arrogance, the pharaoh declines. The ninth disaster arrives as the commoners raid the treasury to loot the grain. Unfortunately, they end up setting fire to the treasury and few managed to escape while others were killed. However, those who survived are killed by the pharaoh who has a team of archers surround them. This causes the Hebrew gods to send down a lightning bolt which destroys Ramses' army. Moses meets the child god Hebrew and is told to go negotiate with the pharaoh to release the 400,000 Hebrews. He is informed by the child Hebrew god that another plague is coming if he is unable to negotiate, and this disaster will be worse than the previous ones. Moses visits Ramses and tries to warn him to negotiate before sunset, but the pharaoh does not accept the threats. After the pharaoh refuses to listen, the tenth disaster comes silently in the night while the people are sleeping. Moses warns the Hebrews to paint their doors with the blood of sheep, as he already knows about the disaster. Every house in Egypt that did not have the blood marking on the door is affected, and many people are killed, including children. Ramses' only son is also killed in this disaster, giving him more grief. Fearful of the wrath of the gods, Ramses decides to surrender to the Hebrew gods. He decides to release the Hebrew prisoners, which have been enslaved for 400 years. Led by Moses, the Hebrews set out on their journey to return to their homeland. As soon as the large group leaves Egypt, Ramses goes back on his word and prepares to slaughter the 400,000 enslaved people. Fortunately, Moses and the crowd is informed of Ramses' plan beforehand, as a spy tells them that Ramses' army is coming up behind them with thousands of soldiers. Desperate to survive, the crowd of Moses decides to take the mountain route. Walking for three days and nights without stopping, they come across a beach. Tired from their constant journey, they choose to reside on the beach, waiting for death. The next morning, they find that the ocean had retreated, 
and they could now walk where the ocean had once been. Moses, firmly believing that this way would lead them to their homeland, asks the 400,000 people to follow him. Meanwhile, Ramses and his army are on their trail, but half of the army dies as they try to cross a narrow mountain road. Regardless of this, they continue on their pursuit of the Hebrews. Meanwhile, the Hebrews are halfway across the ocean floor when they notice Ramses's and his army approaching. Moses asks the Hebrews to hurry crossing to the other side. Meanwhile, he chooses to defend the Hebrews with his own army. As the two enemies approach each other, a dark storm appears in the sky. This does not stop Ramses's and his army from coming to attack them. As soon as the Hebrews reach the other side of the ocean, a hundred-meter-high wave sweeps across the ocean floor toward the humans. Ramses' general refuses to go any further and asks the army to turn back. However, Ramses continues on, and Moses sends his army to retreat as well. The two brothers charge at each other while the wave approaches them. Ramses' army is swallowed by the wave in the meantime. Suddenly, Ramses and Moses are swallowed by the sea. As it turns out, the Hebrew people were the only ones who survived the tenth disaster. Moses is hailed a hero as he freed all of the enslaved Hebrews from their fate. Across the ocean, Ramses is shown to have also survived, but his entire army is dead. Ramses watches as vultures attack the bodies of his army and feels guilty for putting them in such a terrible situation. Moses helps the Hebrew people to travel to their homeland, Canaan, where they will be free. He returns home to his wife and son, who are very happy to see him. As Moses takes the people to their homeland, he sits in a carriage and knows that he has won. The End Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.